Hey everyone, welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV Triple Triad Guide. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at open tournaments. This is a new tournament mode that was made available in patch 5.4. Um, I'll go through a little bit about how to enter them, how they work, what the rules are, what the rewards are, and I'll show you two matches that I entered with, with my uh, commentary. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so firstly to enter the tournament you can talk to the open tournament official over here in Gold Saucer. Um, he has a few options, the first one is to enter the tournament, second is to see the schedule. You can see down here, these run every two hours in uh, local earth time. And they each one has a different rule set, so you can click to view the rules here, you can see we've got same, we've got three open. Uh, and you can also set an alarm for these, which is really nice. So you can go through in here and set an alarm, and then it will play a little alarm on your screen, and it will come up in the chat box when it's ready. Uh, you can also click here to view the overview, see the rules of the tournament and how it actually works. Uh, these are a little different from the regular tournaments, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, but so if you want some more detailed explanation, then you can talk to him and see that. So you can see here we've got the alarm now, five minutes until the start. Um, so let's skip ahead and we'll go ahead and enter the tournament. Usually it's pretty quick, depends on how many people want to sign up. In this one we only had two people, so myself and one other player. And then the rest of the tournament is filled with NPCs. There'll be eight players and you'll have three rounds, so there'll be three matches. This first one we're playing against the other real player and then the next two matches will be against NPCs. The way these matches work is you will select your deck out of pre-selected cards that it gives you. So here I can choose one set of cards from each row, totaling five cards. So I'm looking here, my general rule for building these decks is I'm going to use try and at least have one strong card for each corner. So I quite like the look of that curl card, the two star card there is going to be, that's a pretty good two star card to have for the bottom left. I think it complements Orianger quite nicely, um, Heavens, Heavenswood, Stormblood, Orianger, I'm not sure, the four star card there which would go in the bottom right. And then I quite like the look of that three star card, which would be good for the top right. And then we've got three corners pretty well covered and our five star Gaius card can go pretty much anywhere. So I'm happy with this deck. Um, if you're not sure about this, you can just click the recommended button at the bottom and it will just choose a deck for you. That's probably the easiest way if you're not too familiar with Triple Triad um, or how it works. And as we can see here, it gives us a quick ready check and then we jump into the first match. So the other player is starting first and they're going to go ahead and get out their mod card, their three star card at the bottom. Um, so I'm thinking what I want to do here is probably try and get out my one of my lower cards first. Ideally I want to be using my lower cards, my one and two star cards early on so that I'm saving my stronger cards for later when there are more things on the board to actually turn over. So he gets his two star card out as well. I'm thinking here, I probably want to, again, get out one of my lo my lowest card if I can. He gets out his one as well. So now it's all the lower cards on the board. And here is probably where I made a little bit of a mistake on this. I was thinking that I wanted to turn over both those cards, the one at the bottom and the one on the right side, but I, I looked at it wrong and I realized that Gaius only turned over the um, card on the right and I left myself exposed at the top. So that was a bit of a mistake on my side. So here I thought all I could really do is try and protect that card um, and get away with the draw. And so luckily we did get away with the draw. The draw is not the worst thing. We get You get one point for a draw, but you get zero captures. Um, so if I can still do well in the following two matches, then there's a still a good chance I can win the tournament, even though we only got a draw here. And you can see after that, the points are counted. And me and this other player are now third, the two NPCs are in first. Moving on to the second match, uh, we can see we're against one of the NPCs now. These matches always go much faster because the NPCs don't take any time to think, they just play the cards immediately. So he just goes and gets out his Bahamut card right away. And I'm thinking I want to try and get out something in the corner as well again possible you saving my better cards until a bit later so I'm gonna save my Rianger I'm gonna save my uh, my five star card as well I go ahead and get my two star out early on to turn over his Asian card his four star card 
And now I'm in a pretty good spot here because I don't think he's going to be able to turn anything over. So all I need to do is protect my my uh, low card, which is the one at the bottom. Oh no, never mind. That's not what I did. <laughs> I turned over that card and we managed to get away with two captures, which is really good because that is two points for a win. And because we got an extra capture, it's two captures. So that will be enough, hopefully, to put us into first place. And there we go. So we're up there at first. I'm not sure exactly how the the rankings are calculated based on how many points and how many captures you have. But if you have, generally, if you have more captures, you'll have the most points. I don't think there would really be a, an instance where you have more captures and fewer points than someone else. So, so he goes first. He gets out his, um, his five star right away, which is really good for us because it leaves it exposed in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and get out my one of my weaker cards early on. I think, I yeah, I changed my mind here. I wanted to go back and get out the weakest card I could, which is good. And then he uses his four star. I've noticed a pattern. They don't always do this, but the NPCs will sometimes just go down. They'll just play their five star and then their four and then their three. So you can kind of predict what's gonna come next a little bit you know that it's not going to be too strong. So I know his last card is going to be really weak. It's going to be a one star. He's not going to be able to turn anything over with that. And so we get away with another win. Um, one more capture. And this is enough, enough, I believe, to put us into the lead. So after the points are calculated, we're at the top there with five points and three captures. And depending on how many points you get, you get different rewards so you can see we're there we won this first tournament we got 2350 mgp and two gold triad cards if you get more captures you'll get more points and better cards i think in the past i've received i think i got three gold cards one time and i've even got a platinum as a reward for this for these ones but that's a pretty decent little reward there so we'll jump straight into the next tournament you can normally enter each tournament a couple times like maybe two or three times depending on how long they last so we're in for the second time now i'm looking at the deck i quite like the look of that three star card there for the bottom right i think that'll be well complemented by that five star card which we've got the top left um a two star card with a seven on it is quite nice because you don't always have that and i think it's pretty Andy to have a seven there. So I'm thinking what will complement it pretty well would be ideally something to have at the at the top right or bottom left. It look we're looking quite weak on the top. So I think that four star card with the seven on top would be pretty handy. So I'm thinking this set will be good. We don't have a, a oh no we do have an A. We have Zervan with an A on it. We've got Zervan, we've got Vega, we've got Chocobo, Shinryu, and Providence. Providence? Watch, yeah, sorry. And this time we've got three players. So myself plus two other actual real players, and then five NPCs. So it's him going first, which I'm always kind of glad about. I usually prefer it when they go first because it means you can often save your, like you don't have to play your weakest card. You only have to play four cards if they're going first. So you can kind of, you don't have to use your weakest one. And as I said, it always takes a long time. They choose to go for kind of what I think is a bit of a risky play. They put their weakest card in the middle there just to sort of see what will happen. It's a good way to get rid of your weakest card right off the bat and save your stronger ones because you know if they turn it over, you're going to be able to turn it back. So I go ahead and get out my one star one as well and get my chocobo out. There's plenty of different things we could do here. You know, I think it, it makes sense to try and capture the cards rather than to put something strong in the corner at this point. I think you've got to play a little bit, a little bit aggressively if you can. So you've got to try and take some cards and leave yourself exposed, even though, you know, you're leaving yourself exposed on those sides. So He goes ahead and gets out his three star, which is pretty good. It leaves me in a good spot to try and take something over from the bottom right. So I think I probably put my two star at the bottom. Yeah, that's what I did. And right now we're in the lead. He goes ahead and gets his Ravon, which we are not gonna be able to turn over. 
and I think I went and put my yeah that's what I did I put my three star at the top there which is pretty good we have an eight but he still I still have my four and five star cards left he's used his four star one there he's already used his five star unfortunately Hades doesn't really do oh sorry uh Zervan doesn't really do anything here we can't turn anything over with it all I can do is try and protect the chocobo at the bottom so I think I go ahead and put my four star at the bottom because it has a higher chance of being able to defend anything. And I think he just goes ahead and puts, what's he got left? He's got a two star left, so he can't take anything. And then we manage to get away with the draw again. We can see now that one of the other players has beaten their NPC. So probably they will be in the lead and will be around third. I think, yep, we're third along with the player we played against. And then we'll jump into the next match against Weira. Weira, Weira, green hands. Um, so I mentioned before that the NPCs have patterns. They can just play, they can just start with their strongest card and just work down the list, but they don't always do that. And so the nice thing here with the three open is you can kind of if you can force them to play their stronger cards early on then you can see what they're going to do and it gives you quite a big advantage so here i'm thinking i'm going to try and get out maybe one of my slightly weaker cards i go for my three star for the bottom because i know that his alfino and alice is not going to be able to take it over and here we see he is gone straight for his four star and then his five star there's nothing really we can do. I can't really put anything to take anything over at this point. I could put my Zervan at the bottom right and take over that, but then it leaves it exposed to anything. And I've only got my my Chocobo and my, uh, my four star left to take it back. So I could put Zervan at the bottom here, overtake his five star. He'll put something at the bottom, which is, which is what I do. And then this was a bit uh, surprising. The other player, instead of taking over my Zervan, they put something at the top there. So I'm going to go ahead and try and capitalize on that. I think I put my Chocobo at the top. Yeah, there we go. And then we can turn over that Porks in the middle, which is really good for us because we get away with two captures. So we get two points for the win and two points for the capture, which is really nice. And had this been the earlier tournament, that would have been enough to put us right to the top. But as you can see, because the other player already got a win in their previous match, and I think they got a win in this one, um, we now come second, and they're in the lead with four points and three captures. Moving on now to the final match um, against this other player. So this is the other non-NPC player, and I'm looking pretty scared of that four-star card with the two nines on the side. That one always messes me up. So he goes and gets this iguana out right away I'm thinking I probably want to try to take that over if I can so Shinryu is looking pretty good here we've got the two eights at the bottom and the right it's pretty strong um, and he would be able to take it over if he uses his nine nine on the left side there which he does he uses his four star he leaves it exposed at the top and bottom which is quite smart because then you know there's two turns I could take it over he could take it back and he'll be in a pretty pretty good spot. I put Providence Watcher up here, which might have been a bit of a mistake because I kind of waste the seven and the eight at the top there, but that's okay. He gets his Griffin out, and I realize that I can't overtake that Griffin with the seven. There's nothing I can do for that. So I'm in a bit of a, a weak spot here because I can't turn anything over. Uh, I could only turn over the... No, I can't turn anything over. And I don't really have a, a strong position. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Chocobo down here. Knowing he still has his 5 star left. So he's got his 1 star and his 5 star. So I'm thinking right now he's probably going to win this one. He gets out his uh, 5 star card which has got the ace at the bottom. It's not a lot I can do. But I know I can use the Zervan at least to... Yeah, there's. I don't think there's anything... Too much i can do here i think i was just taking some time to make sure because same is in effect you know when i saw the seven and i saw the three and i thought oh i better make sure there's no no same which there wasn't luckily 
and we managed to finish with a draw, which is a little unfortunate. If we'd won that, we might have been able to win the tournament. But with a draw, I think we end up second. Yeah, so we end up second in this tournament. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly touch on the achievements that are available for these open tournaments. Winning your first open tournament will net you the Phoenix card as a reward, which is a really strong card. If you're not too familiar with Triple Triad, then I recommend trying to get this achievement early on. Um, as it will get you a, a pretty strong card to have in your deck um, uh, early on in your in your triple triad journey. So I recommend doing that. You'll also get the Orchestrum Roll Shuffle or Boogie, which is the triple triad theme if you win 10 matches. Um, that's not 10 tournaments, just 10 matches. So that won't take that long to try and get. I think I got that, you know, on my first day of trying to record this. Uh, so I recommend doing that if you like to collect, or collect Orchestrum Rolls. Beyond that, there are achievements for winning so many tournaments and winning so many matches. I think you can get some other titles, and I believe there is even a fashion accessory um, associated with these achievements. So if you like collecting things like I do, then I recommend having a look at those. Um, and that's all we're going to go over in this video. In the next video, we'll be talking a, more, a little more about general tips for Triple Triad, about how to get started. So if you're interested, please do subscribe to the channel. We do a lot of Final Fantasy stuff, a lot of uh, Triple Triad information. So please like this video if you enjoyed the guide, if you watched this far. And uh, I will see you all again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.